Radio Podcasts. Hello and welcome to Homeschool History. I'm Greg Jenner and I've spent my whole career making history fun on the TV show Horrible Histories and more recently on the BBC podcast You're Dead to Me, although that's mostly for the grown-ups. With everyone being cooped up in the house, I thought I'd deliver a snappy history lesson to entertain and educate the whole family. Who says that homeschooling can't be a bit of fun? Today we are venturing back thousands of years to prehistoric Britain and paddling our little boats along the Scottish coastline to a seriously special Stone Age settlement, Skara Bray. The Stone Age was an enormous stretch of time in human history, which lasted about 2.5 million years. It was first named the Stone Age in Victorian times, when archaeologists divided it into three, the oldest being the Paleolithic period, then you get the Mesolithic period, and then the Neolithic period. And this was based on the types of tools that people used. Actually, modern archaeologists think the three categories are a bit wrong now, but the names seem to have stuck, so we'll use them anyway. Today we're going to focus on the last phase, the Neolithic, also known as the New Stone Age. And when I say Stone Age, you might be thinking of cave people or Fred Flintstone. But these Neolithic people were actually closer in time to us than they were to the people living in caves during the Ice Age. In Britain, the Neolithic started only 6,000 years ago and lasted for about 1,500 years. Now that might seem like ages away, but if you think about it in terms of your family tree, that was only 170 grandmas ago. Back in my day... The Neolithic era was when the world witnessed the farming revolution. And no, I don't mean angry farmers waving protest signs. No, this was when people first started growing crops and keeping animals for food, instead of hunting and gathering in the wild. Now, this was hugely important. Instead of roaming around, humans started settling permanently in one place, living in houses and villages. However, it wasn't like on a Monday they were chasing deer around and by Wednesday they'd built themselves a Tesco metro. No, it took a while to catch on everywhere. Archaeologists think that farming started in Turkey and the Middle East about 10,000 years ago, but the people living in Britain took 4,000 years to get the hang of it, slow coaches. So what was life like in Neolithic Britain? Well, they lived a lot like we do, but with much simpler technology and with a lot more cardio exercise. They didn't have cars or bikes or buses, in fact they hadn't even invented the wheel yet, let alone wagons or wheelbarrows, so they had to walk everywhere. They did have boats though, so they could do a nice paddle along the rivers or even along the coastline. Ah, sounds quite nice. They hadn't discovered metal either, so their tools were mostly made of wood, stone or bone. And as well as building houses, they also got busy building big stone monuments called megaliths. And when people died, they also would build big burial tombs called dolmens or long barrows. Although archaeologists think that only very important people got to be buried in these. Everyone else was probably just chucked in the river. Not so much fly tipping as die tipping. That's one for the dads. The dead were often buried together at the start of the Neolithic era, but eventually they were buried alone. Chunky stone monuments might also have commemorated important events, kind of like our modern war memorials. But Neolithic people also knew how to have some fun. They built gathering places called causeway enclosures, which were ditches with loads of entrances. And when archaeologists dig these up, they often find loads of animal bones, which suggests that this was where big groups gathered for barbecue parties and festivals. And these parties were normally held in neutral territory, in between nearby settlements, so the whole region could get together for a nice hog roast. <coughs> kind of like a Stone Age Glastonbury, but probably with less disgusting toilets. Glastonbury makes some noise right now! Places for big get-togethers were really important. While people in Neolithic Turkey and the Middle East had built pretty big towns, in Britain people were much more scattered around in isolated houses. Sounds a bit lonely, but at least nobody would wake you up on an early Sunday morning doing noisy DIY. So annoying. But we're now going to look at one specific place where they did do things a bit differently. 
In 1850, a huge storm hit the Orkney Islands off the northeast coast of Scotland, and the storm exposed the tops of some very ancient houses. A famous archaeologist called Professor Child, he wasn't actually a child, he was an adult, did a proper excavation in the 1920s, and he found something truly extraordinary, a beautifully preserved Neolithic village we now call Skara Bray. And I mean really, really amazingly preserved. He found walls of eight houses that were intact, and the furniture was still there, and the only thing missing were the roofs. There's a reason why Skara Bray is still in such good nick after 5,000 years. Usually, Neolithic people used wood to build stuff, but in Orkney, they chopped down all the trees, so they didn't have any. Oops. With no timber around, they instead used sandstone, which was very easy to split into useful slabs and could be lifted out of the ground. They also would use the bones of dead whales. Bad news for whales, good news for us, because stone and bone doesn't rot away like wood does, so we now know what these homes look like. So let me take you on a little tour around an ideal Neolithic home. Mind your head. Unlike the other houses on Orkney, which were long and rectangular shaped, Skara Bray's houses started out as round, but then were rebuilt to be square with rounded corners. They're about 30 metres square in space, so the size of a small studio flat today, and they had a fireplace in the middle of the floor to cook food and to make the room feel nice and toasty. Of course, they didn't have much firewood because they chopped down all the trees, so they probably burned peat and dried seaweed for fuel. Toasty and smelly. Ugh. Also, these houses didn't have chimneys, so they'd very quickly fill up with smoke. Mmm, toasty, smelly and spluttery. <coughs> So why didn't they have chimneys? Well, archaeologists have discovered that chimneys would have caused the roof to catch on fire, and that would have been a bit too toasty. And they couldn't open a window to let the smoke out because, uh, they didn't have any. The smoke probably rose upwards, so crouching down, or being a small child, was probably the best way to avoid getting sore throats and teary eyes. <laughs> and there were no chairs, so people probably sat on the floor. Apart from the smoke, and not having chairs, their homes were surprisingly similar to our homes. Each house had two stone beds, shaped like long open boxes, into which people could put soft springy moss and soft animal skins to make it all soft and snug. Ooh, cosy. And we know about these box beds because similar ones made of wood were still being used on the Orkney Islands as recently as 100 years ago. In Skara Bray, the two beds were at opposite ends of the house. Archaeologists think that one was for the parents to share, and the other one was for the kids to share, which means that families were living together, but that the parents liked to get a bit of peace and quiet from the screaming kids. <coughs> Sounds a bit like lockdown now. Each house also had a kitchen cabinet. It was a stone box where they would keep their food and store their clay cooking pots. And if that isn't relatable enough, at the far end of the house they had a set of shelves for displaying their fanciest things. Perhaps they put their poshest pots on there, or maybe they were used as religious shrines for keeping sacred objects. And if you've got your own special collection on a shelf, perhaps a Funko Pops collection or sports trophies, then you're no different to what people were doing 170 grandmas ago. And that's not all. In one of these houses, archaeologists have found a little human figurine carved from whalebone. It may have been a small child's toy, or a doll, or it may have been a sacred charm. Even though the stone houses have survived, their roofs have rotted away, so they were probably made from turf. With a load of grass on the roof, these little houses probably looked a bit like hobbit holes from Lord of the Rings. minus the adorable round doors, and with fewer visiting wizards. In fact, Skara Bray's doors were especially tiny, probably to keep out the biting Orkney wind, so someone as tall as Gandalf the wizard would have had to crawl on his hands and knees to get in. Now you might expect that people who lived on an island would be constantly chomping on seafood, but by studying the teeth of the ancient skeletons, modern archaeology can tell us that barely anyone at Skara Bray ate fish, except in emergencies. Some people even decided they'd rather starve to death than eat fish. Oh, they would have hated sushi. Ew. So, what did they eat then? Mostly they ate the animals that they kept, such as cows, pigs and sheep. And it would have been quite a faff getting all the animals over to Orkney from Scotland in the first place. They'd have had to put them on boats. Not easy to do with panicking pigs and cows trying to leap into the sea. 
When it came to dinner time, they ate a lot of meat, as well as some veg and some crops, mostly barley bread and things like beans. Mmm, beans on toast. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, but without the sweet tomato sauce. Oh. <sighs> They didn't just eat their animals; they also had pet dogs, and they had oxen to drag their plows for growing the crops. And they also wore animal furs and leather too, as well as clothes made of flax and even nettles. Ow! Oh, that stings! Sad news: I'm afraid they tended to use baby animal skins for clothing because the leather was softer, and they also sometimes used wild cat skin for the nice, soft, warm fur as well. Sorry, Tiddles. Scarabray had about 100 people living in the houses at any one time, but they were part of a much larger community on the islands of Orkney that was about 10,000 strong. Now, 10,000 people in the Stone Age is a huge number of people. There's only 22,000 people on Orkney now in 2020, so this really was an amazing community. People clearly thrived in Neolithic Orkney, but they really didn't like change. Instead of burying their dead individually, like others on the mainland had started to do, they were still sticking with big megalithic tombs filled with hundreds of bodies. So Scarabray had a hundred people living there for about six hundred years, over five thousand years ago. Do you remember the archaeologist Professor Child who excavated the site in the 1920s? Well, he thought that Scarabray was abandoned in a hurry due to a huge storm, but modern archaeology does not agree. Even though Scarabray is now right next to the sea, in Neolithic times it would have been much further inland. It sounds like people back then just decided to go and live in a busier village. Maybe they just got bored of their quiet little isolated community and they wanted some more fun. Bring on the DIY! Eventually, the Neolithic era ended in Orkney, probably with the arrival of new people from Europe coming over and bringing metal and the wheel. The Stone Age was finally done. And the Bronze Age had begun. Okay, and that's us done as well. So it's time for the quiz. Are you ready? Here we go. Question one: The last phase of the Stone Age after the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic is called what? I'll give you a clue. It means New Stone Age. Question two: Scarabray can be found on which Scottish islands? Question three: In contrast to the rest of Neolithic Britain, why were Scarabray's houses so well preserved? Question four: What didn't the people of Scarabray eat, even though there was loads of it around? And question five: Which famous archaeologist did the first proper excavation of Scarabray in the 1920s? Okay, now it's time for the answers. The answer to question one. It was, of course, the Neolithic. The answer to question two: the Orkney Islands. The answer to question three: the houses were built from stone, not wood. The answer to question four: people didn't like to eat fish. And the answer to question five: the archaeologist was called Professor Child. How did you do? If you didn't get all five, that's okay. Why not listen to a different episode on the podcast and see if you can beat your score? Tune in next time for some more homeschool history, and make sure to subscribe to the podcast on BBC Sounds so you never miss an episode. Thank you for listening. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>